Inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. Mikkel, why don't we start things off talking about what your rentals have done for you? How have they improved your life? Um, So basically, I've been able to step away from full-time work and basically go part-time. And more recently, I was able to purchase another car. Um, For the longest time, my family and I just had one car. Have you needed a a huge portfolio to do this? No, um, I've only had I only have three properties, and you know I haven't done anything extraordinary. I've purchased all my homes on market. Joining us on the podcast today from Rhode Island is Mikkel Blanchard. Mikkel is going to talk about how he was able to go part time at his job with just a couple of rental properties. Let's take a really quick break to thank our sponsors. We'll come right back and we'll meet Mikkel. Whether you've been buying rental properties for years or you're looking to buy your very first rental property, the very first thing you want to do before you go out and find a great deal is to figure out your financing. The lender that I recommend is Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. She's a nationwide lender and her specialty is helping investors finance rental properties. Chaley has a special limited time offer just for our listeners. She will pay for your appraisal up to $500 when you close a loan with her. Just mention you heard about this on the Rental Income Podcast. If you want more details or if you're ready to get started today, just go to RidgeLendingGroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E LendingGroup.com. And MLS 42056. A good deal on a rental property isn't going to last very long. To win properties today, you need to move quickly when a deal comes on the market. But it takes time to analyze a property. I want to let you know about an app where you can analyze deals on your phone in seconds. It's called Ask Rick. That's R-I-C for Rental Income Calculator. You can analyze a deal with the push of a button. You can figure out the rent, your mortgage payment, your expenses, and figure out the cash flow. If the numbers make sense, you can make an offer right there on the app, or you can send a calendar invite to your agent to see the property in person. Ask Rick is currently offering a free seven-day trial. Just search for Ask Rick in the App Store or go to Just Ask Rick. That's R-I-C. Just ask Rick.com. Mikhail, having freedom was important to you and everybody needs money. But if you want to have freedom, you've got to either figure out a way to make money without having to trade hours for dollars, or you've got to figure out a way to cut your expenses. And you figured out how to cut your expenses with a house hack, right? Yep. So because of COVID, I wasn't able to get a multi, but I said to myself, we have to find a single family that will generate some income. Um, so we found this this single family house that had a finished studio. It had its own private entrance, its heating, its own electric. Um, but we just needed to add a bathroom. So we added a brand new bathroom, tiled, all everything, you know, beautiful. And so I heard about traveling nurses on a podcast. I can't remember if it was yours or or bigger pockets, but um it, it gave me the great idea to try it because it's not as much turnover as Airbnb. And it's, it's been fantastic. I'm on my third nurse right now and um, it's really working out. Yeah. I, I love that. I mean, that that's come up um, on the podcast a couple of times. So how, how long do the nurses generally stay for? Yeah. So they stay about two to three months at a time. And, um, and basically what I do, uh, I just request proof of assignment from each nurse and, you know, I, I get them in. Wow. Are you using Furnished Finder to find them? Yep. So uh, I use Furnished Finder and I also joined a bunch of um, Facebook groups for nurses. Okay. Do um, do you even notice that they're there? No, honestly, um, when when doing the, the renovation, I had my contractor put in some um, special insulation to, you know, keep the sound out. But honestly, you know, the hours that they work, they work 12 hour shifts. They're hardly ever home. And um, honestly, it's it's like they're not here. That's great. So let's talk about how that has benefited you. So the mortgage for your house, how much how much is your mortgage every month? So my current mortgage for my single family house is twenty one hundred dollars. And the amount of money I get for the traveling nurse is $1,400. Wow. So that's the, so you only need to come up with $700 a month then to pay your mortgage. 
Yep. Right. That you see, I think that is really, really so awesome. And and that is really, I think, a, a big key to be able to do what you've you're doing is to get your overhead really low. And you know, a twenty one hundred dollar mortgage is a lot of money that you need to come up with somehow every month. And in your case, I mean, you were going to work every day to make twenty one hundred dollars. But now that you only need to make seven hundred dollars, do you feel like? Do you? Am I right? Like, do you feel like like lowering your overhead was really a key part in being able to do what you're doing? Yeah, essentially, the biggest thing is you know living for free. Yeah. Um, that other seven hundred, the other units pay for that, and kind of taking away you know the living expense. It kind of opens up doors for us to you know step down from work and go part time, venture into other things. Totally. Yeah. I mean, I I think that just gives you so much freedom. I I think that's really, really smart. Now let's go over the numbers on your other rentals and see how this works. So with the three family, how much is your mortgage on that property? So the mortgage on that one is 2000. And since we left the first floor, uh, the building brings in forty one hundred. Forty one hundred, and so all right. So that's a building that when you were living there, wasn't generating forty one hundred dollars because that was a house hack, and so you were you were living there. But now that you're able to rent out your unit, you're making just that much more money. Correct. Right. Okay. So you've got forty one hundred in rents from that building. You've got a two thousand dollar mortgage. So. So you, you've got $2,100 a month before any kind of repairs or vacancy on a perfect month where nothing goes wrong. You're, you're profiting $2,100. Yep. That's great. Now, what about the other unit? So you, you said you also have a two unit building. Yes. And so the two unit building, um, the total rents for that one, it brings in 2680. Okay. And, my current mortgage is nine hundred eighty dollars. Wow. Okay. So that's what, like sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars a month profit on that. So, all right. So you've you've got like what is it like thirty seven? It's just under four thousand a month in profit after the mortgage for both properties. Am I doing yep. the math right? Okay. Now, what about setting money aside for repairs or vacancy? How do you do? Th- how do you deal with that? Yeah. So um, what I've been doing um, beginning of 2020, uh, I I like to put away 15 percent of my rents for, you know, any major expense that comes along. Okay, And how how did you come up with 15 percent? So right now I am managing the properties myself. Um, You know, in the past through podcasts, I've heard that, you know, management costs could be anywhere from, you know, eight to 12 percent. And then factoring, you know, other expenses, I've seen people do 5%. So I figured 15% was a good number. Okay. And how has that been working out so far? Like has, has putting aside that 15%, has that, have you had the money there so that when things have come up, you've been able to cover it? Yeah, it, it's, it's honestly super comforting. You know, in the beginning, I wasn't doing that. And so, you know, I had to just, you know, come up with the money as soon as a, as possible somewhere. But, um, you know, putting it aside, it, it, it puts me at, at ease knowing that if something does happen, we have reserves. Sure. That is awesome. Now, does your wife work? Nope. So my wife stays home with our three kids. Um, we have a five-year-old, a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Okay. So, so it, it's all on you to, to make this work and, and the rentals are all making it possible. Yeah, it, it's been mind boggling. It's been a ride, um, but it's definitely opened up a ton of doors for us. All right. So you've got a, a three unit and you've got a two unit. How did you get the down payments to buy those properties? So, yeah. So um, to buy that first multifamily, the three family, uh, my mother, I basically went to her and she was able to let me borrow um, about $20,000 to go buy that house. I was able to only put three and a half percent down, which, you know, that amount of money that my mother let me borrow pretty much covered everything. And, uh, I had a plan to pay her back and, you know, I was able to pay her back within two years. So now I've been able to 
build up her trust for maybe future deals that she'll want to lend to me. That's great. Okay, so you were going to live in that three unit, right? That that was basically that was a house hack, right? Yep. Um, so I I lived on the first floor unit. The building was completely vacant, which was pretty awesome. I got to hand select my tenants. Um, my second floor tenant I was able to get within two weeks, and then my third floor I got within the first two months. I love that. So and because you were living there, and that was your primary residence you were able to do, I I assume, an FHA loan? Correct. Yeah, I had to jump through some hoops because I had already owned a single family that I bought in 2013 with conventional financing. And so lenders were looking at me a little confused as to why I would buy a three-family now with an FHA loan. Sure. they, you know, a lot of them assumed I was committing mortgage fraud, but I was like, no, I'm, I'm actually moving into this unit. So I just kept calling lenders until one worked with me. So then what's your goal? Like, do you want to keep buying more rental properties and then eventually be able to support yourself with your rentals? Yeah. So, um, I am currently part-time, um, at Costco and I am also a part-time realtor. My goal ultimately is to, um, gain more properties. My, the number would be passively a month, probably about 15,000. Um, okay. And that, that would be healthy for us. Now, let me point out a couple of things and you, you do not have to answer these, these questions. You might not have the answers. I just want to point them out just for the listeners as things to think about if someone is trying to do what you're doing And, and maybe you do have the answers, but, um, The first is right now, I assume you get health insurance through your job, right? Yes. So if you were to leave your job at some point, have you thought about how you would get health insurance? Yes. So definitely before you make any large decisions like this, um, do your due diligence, get some quotes and factor in um, how you're going to pay for the health insurance. My goal is to acquire at least one or two more properties before the year is over so that I can um, cover the cost of insurance. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So you're, you're just going to buy another couple of properties and the cash flow that those properties generate will pay for your health insurance. You yep. can almost think of it that way. Okay. All right. that, I, I, I think that's a great idea. Now, the other thing is right now with having a job, it's easy to get a mortgage when you have a W-2 job. But when you're self-employed, you may have you may have to jump, jump through some more hoops to get mortgages. Have you thought about that, that when you leave your job, it, it may be harder to keep growing? Uh, yes. So I'm venturing into many different areas, trying to partner with as many people. But um, I've looked into things as pulling uh, lines of credit on my properties. I'm also diving into hard money and um, partnering with others that may be able to qualify for a loan. Um, but also as a realtor, uh, I'm also gaining commissions that way and, mm-hmm. and doing whatever I can. Yeah. And I, I think that's the way to look at it, too, is that you're not going to buy a bunch of rental properties and then just sit at home all day or sit on a beach and not work. It it sounds like you, you're going to be a realtor. You're going to be selling houses. You're going to make money that way. So I, I really think that if you hustle as a realtor, you're going to be able to make way more money than you're making right now at your day job. Do you think I'm right? Yep. And, um, I, I think that's 100% correct. And it's something, you know, I enjoy. I love it. Yeah. It's exciting. And as a realtor, I love helping people, you know, purchase a large asset that could, you know, do the same thing it's done for me. Totally. Yeah. I, I think you're on a good path there. The other thing that I, I would think about is but before you leave your job is to to try to save as much money as you can, to try to have a big war chest so that if something bad does happen, you know, say if if you have three tenants leave you all at the same time, that that doesn't ruin your plans. Ha, have you thought about that or do, do you have money set aside if, if something really bad happened? Um, right now, that's kind of just my 15 percent. OK, putting away. Um, but also on top of that, 
you know, I'm helping some friends as a property manager. So that's another area I'm diving into. And, and I, as I've been helping people with rentals, the market is crazy right now. So sure. if so, I've been able to get a new tenant within, you know, two weeks. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you can turn things around pretty quickly. The, the other thing that, that I would point out is, so right now having five rentals, and if you add a few more, maybe you get up to seven or eight or nine in, in the next year or so. When you have a smaller portfolio like that, it's possible that you could have three or four people leave all at the same time. And you you could find yourself in trouble where if if you have a bigger portfolio, say when you get up to 25 rentals or 50 rentals, you're not going to have 20 people leave at the same time. It's, it's just never going to happen. So you almost, as you get more rentals, it becomes less risky. So I, I think that's just something else to keep in mind that try to get as many doors as you can. It, it's going to it's going to really stabilize your portfolio. And I, I think it'll make your life a lot better. So. Agreed. Yeah, I definitely want to scale to commercial uh, five units and more yeah. as a goal as well. So ha- have you had any any big problems? Um, has anything really gone wrong like since you've been buying rentals? Um, I've had a couple hiccups. Um, one of them being uh, a small kitchen fire. Um, the firefighters came immediately. They were able to rip the oven out of the unit. Um, and luckily, at the end of the day, you know, there was not that much damage. Um, luckily, the tenants were cleaners by trade. So they were able to, you know, clean all the soot, get everything out. And other than that, the only damage was on the first floor. The firefighters just, you know, uh, had to get at the ceiling and I had to pay 25 bucks to replace the, uh, the drop ceiling. Uh, we actually had a, a water line go and, uh, you know, I was always kicking myself because I used to get letters in the mail stating, oh, pay $150 for the year. You get waterline protection. Yeah. I never did it. Guess what? My waterline went and uh, the total cost for that was about 5000 But luckily, there wasn't tons of water damage, but we needed to dig up the ground and shut off the water. Oh, wow. Yeah. So did you sign up for that insurance or do you feel like you're safe now because you've just replaced it? Yep, we're safe now. It's all replaced, yeah. and it's it's so good. Would you recommend someone buy that, like going forward? If someone else has a a property, do do you think that or maybe with an older property, like do you think that's that's an important thing to buy? Yeah, it's definitely important to look into to see if it's been replaced, um, because a lot of times your your home insurance will not cover the cost of that. So that's why they they offer that third party waterline protection. Yeah. Mikel mentioned earlier that he has his real estate license and he loves working with investors. If you are in the market for a rental property in the New England area and you want to connect with Mikel, I've got his contact information on the website you can find it at rentalincomepodcast.com slash episode 326. I'd like to thank today's sponsor for making this episode possible. It's Chaley Ridge from Ridge Lending Group. If you're looking to buy a rental property, whether you're just getting started or you want to add to your portfolio, the lender that I recommend is Chaley Ridge. She's a nationwide lender and her specialty is helping investors finance rental properties. She has a ton of different loan programs, and she can find something customized to you in your situation. Chaley currently is running a promotion just for listeners of the Rental Income Podcast. If you mention us when you call her up, she would be happy to credit you $500 towards your appraisal. If you want to find out more or if you want to set up a time to talk to Chaley, just go to ridgelendinggroup.com. That's R-I-D-G-E, lendinggroup.com, NMLS42056. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast today. Make sure you subscribe. We have new interviews every single Tuesday. And if you subscribe, you'll get notified as soon as they come out. My name is Dan Lane, and this has been the Rental Income Podcast.